All right, my, the session we're going to be talking about is uh, seven secrets. And let me tell you what the secret is in this business. Have you always wondered what the secret is? The secret is get off your butt and do something, right? Start taking ownership. This is your business, you know. And I thought to myself, how am I going to talk about the seven secrets? Because the secret is, hey, this is a business. Stop playing with it. Take ownership. Look in the mirror and say, good morning, former stupid. I need to change my life. That's the secret in this business, right? I'm going to learn what to do and go and apply. That's the secret in this business. But I am going to give you some ideas that can help you uh, in that direction. Number one is attitude. And I want to tell you when my attitude changed in this opportunity in life is uh, I remember Dalton Kretzman, Lawn might know he was a manager on the farm with us, and he said, uh, he came to me one day and said, hey, boss. (laughs) I said, yes. He said, boss, can I ask you a straight question? You're not going to get mad? I said, no, why? What's the question? He says, you've been uh, one of these aggressive bosses that everybody's too scared to ask a question, otherwise they're basically fired, had about 200 staff, and he said, uh, but you know, you become so nice and so thoughtful and so kind, we can talk to you and we enjoy being with you and asking you questions, what happened? <laughs> and this is what happened. When I discovered I was dying, I didn't go and shout it to the world. I didn't know uh, what I decided to do was... I don't want to leave my family with a bad taste about a terrible dad. And I decided when I wake up in the morning, I've got a choice to have a good attitude or a bad attitude. I decided to have a good attitude. I decided when things go wrong, to have a good attitude about it or a bad attitude, that I could make a choice and I decided to have a good attitude about it. And you see, attitude is really the foundation of success in life. And it says over here, Enthusiasm is the yeast that makes your hopes rise to the stars. Enthusiasm is the sparkle in your eye. It's the swing in your gait. It's the grip in your hand. It's the irresistible surge in your will. Enthusiasts are fighters. They have fortitude. Become so confident in your opportunity that when you finish a meeting, the couple will say, now this is really important. When you finish a meeting, this is what needs to happen. A husband needs to turn to his wife and say, oh my gracious me, Mildred, one thing I know for sure, whether we do it or not, they're going to do this opportunity. You want to get into the zone in building this business that it makes no difference. Have you ever done meetings and people are picking their nose and playing their ear and checking their watch and playing that? You just have to keep on rolling. That's what you have to do. You just have to keep on focusing on your mission, and your mission is to get a bunch of no's. Who's read go for no? Just have, exactly, you just have to, your mission must be to just keep on uh, keeping on, no matter what happens. You know, uh, when we joined this opportunity, there's a somebody by the name of Brian, just when we are coming into it, and he said, never let a worm get into your business. Never let a worm get into your life. I think it was Brian Murray or something like that. Anyway, and he, and he said, you know what happens? Uh, you approach somebody and they say, no, that's a worm getting into your life. Somebody says, I'm going to do this business. I'm going to overtake you. That's a worm getting into your life, right? And he says, when worms get into your life, you just have to keep on, keeping on, right? Keep on, keeping on. Just keep going. Don't let those worms get into your life. Just keep on moving forward and just, you know, just uh, flush them out your life. I haven't started my talk yet. So uh, I remember um, somebody gave me an audio tape. And it went something like this. I was driving along and I plugged it in. I wasn't really keen on this thing. I had heard about these kind of, uh, you know, these kind of scams. They come and go. The company will be gone in six months' time. They're just going to use you, make money out of you. The products don't work. It's all a lot of lies. And somebody gave me a, an audio tape and it said to me, How much money do you have in your bank account? Well, I had nothing. It said, how many years of hard, hard work did it take you to get all that money in your bank account? It had taken me years to get to nowhere. It said, is it getting better or is it getting worse? And all I thought, oh my gracious me, inflation is growing like that. Have you heard the word inflation recently? Inflation is growing like that. My income's like that. I'm getting poorer every single month. And then I went on, said, who taught you that this is the plan to succeed? And I suddenly thought of my broke professors back at school. They taught me how to succeed in life. Get yourself a good education and a good, secure job. Have you ever heard that trash? 
I nearly said something else, but I remember we've got church tomorrow morning. The next thing I'd cross out. The heart of insanity is doing the same thing day in and day out and expecting a different results. You see, I decided to check out this opportunity. And let me tell you what I discovered. I discovered an incredible global, global opportunity with the most awesome products, with the most amazing leadership. I discovered a team, the Eagle team, which is just global, a massive organization across the world that's got systems in place to empower us and train us and guide us and equip us to succeed. I discovered a marketing plan bar none. The Near Life marketing plan is absolutely awesome. I discovered a company that's been around since 1958 that is rock solid, a company I'm so proud to be part of. And I said, that, this is it. I pulled my shoulders back, I looked my head up, and I said, this is it. If you're in, you're in. If you're not in, just don't even, I don't want to catch your disease. You know, the Word of God teaches you what you need to do is go and approach somebody. If they say no, dust your feet off and catch away before you get their stinking thing, thinking, right? And th that's, that's what went to my brain. Okay, so seven secrets to build this business. Number one is uh, you develop a big dream. What will a dream do for you? Have you ever tried to train a flea before? If you put a flea in a, in a jar, that flea will jump up and knock, the, knock its head. Afterwards, the flea's jumping with its paws above its head like as big as the head's pounding. You can take a little of that jaw, a Dalmatian can walk past, and the flea will only jump to the level of the lid. It won't jump out. And now what happens to us out there in life? Guess what happens in life? We are only jumping because we have been beaten up so many times. I see people get involved in this opportunity. They get excited. They get out and they get to 20 no's in a row and they quit on their dream. You might have to get 200 no's in a row until you learn how to overcome it. You need a low IQ to build this business, a low I quit. You need something inside of you that says, man, I'm going to make this thing happen whether the hell ups the governor. I don't care. When people say this thing doesn't work, I say, well, you stay broke. You don't like to travel. You don't want to retire young. Enjoy yourself. I'm, I'm gone, man. Dust my feet if I'm hitting the road. You need a, a dream will give you the power to break, free, break through the glass. A pike and a minnow. They love to put them in the same fish tank. The pike eats minnow for breakfast. So guess what happens? You put the, pie, the, the minnow in there, gone. One second, just opens its mouth in and it's gone. So how do you put them in the same tank? You put a sleeve of a glass in there. The pike comes in, tries to grab, and hits its nose. After about 200 times of hitting your nose, guess what happens? It associates its dinner with pain. And that's what happens to people in this industry. They associate their dinner with pain. They associate their freedom with pain. And if somebody says no, they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to early retirement, residual income, quality products, travel the world, freedom, wonderful people, uh, tax breaks. That's what they're saying no to. They're not saying no to you. If, if you go to a restaurant and you order a cup of coffee and the waiter says you want cream and you say no, they shouldn't slit their wrists. That's your choice to say no. A dream will give you the power to break, break free. You know, when you're confronted with a mountain, you need to find a way over, around, or through. I remember one of my managers back in Africa with one of my companies, he phoned me one day, he said, boss, did you hear about this? I said, yes. He said, oh my gracious me, let me tell you what happened. When I heard about it, it felt like somebody hit me on the head with a brick. I said, isn't that great news? He said, what do you mean? I said, when that brick bounced off your head, land on the ground, you stand on, you learn from it, you're one step higher in life. <laughs> Too many of us think about the brick problem. You speak to moms and they say, hey, your boy is five years old, looking so, oh, you should have seen the labor problems. People spend their life looking in the rear view mirror. Look forward. Don't think about the pain. To succeed in life, the only way to go up, you need pain to gain. You have to have consistency. You know, we had a water pump back on the farm near my office, and this water pump, you have to prime it. You put water in, you come in. You, when it, anyone in those old water pumps, you go, chuk, 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 And I used to really laugh because this thing needed some new lawn. We should have put some new seals in that water pump. Remember, right? Because the poor staff used to go, they put water in that pump, and they'd put, I lend a semen, 
you know, the thing doesn't work, you know. And they, they, then they hear the water running back. They knew it was nearly at the top. And this is what happens in this business. We pump it, but we quit before it, we, it starts flowing. You need to get it to the top. You need it flowing. And they go back and they put some water in there. And eventually the water would flow. You have to keep on pumping this thing until the water flows. Because one day it will flow. You see, in life, you have to give up something to go up. What are you prepared to give up? You know, my wife and I have given up a lot. We sacrificed a lot. We slept in motor cars. We've done all kinds of things, but I'm going to stay on time. You have to stay in the creative stage in this opportunity. You have to get out there, sponsor people. People say, oh, my business is not growing. Sponsor more people. I need a bigger check. Sponsor more people. I'm not taking steps. Sponsor more people and then learn how to work with them. Serve them. Laverne and I, we slept in motor cars at events. Have you done that for your team? They didn't book an accommodation. There was no accommodation in town. We slept in a car. Have you done that for your team? I remember when we joined this opportunity, the president of Africa at that time, uh, he ran a challenge, and he said, if you sponsor 20 peop or 10 people per month, after two months, we're going to give you a folder. So I went to him and I said, hey, that folder's beautiful. I want one for my wife and one for me. He said, yeah, no problem. Just sponsor 20 a month. Guess what we did? I must tell you, we were running for that challenge one day. And we had one day left to get our 10 or something like that. We invited these relations we hadn't seen for years. I'm sure you've all done this. We invited them around for dinner. And we were dropping the ideas about what an awesome opportunity and great products. Eventually they say, ah. Oh, this sounds wonderful, so how'd you do it? So Laverne says, we invite people like you around for dinner, we sell them on this incredible opportunity, and we sponsor them. <laughs> well, they never joined. <laughs> they never joined. I didn't go and find a new one, right? Okay, so yeah, um, set yourself targets, stay in the creative stage. Let me tell you, those 20 was the foundation of our business. Those 20 took our business like absolute crazy. So uh, point... Uh, the next point of here is stay in the creative stage, and that, those 20 people took our business like crazy. As a matter of fact, I remember about five, six months into the business, we got a check of 9,000. I got so excited, I nearly peed myself. Let me tell you, you could, in those days, you could buy a brand new Toyota Corolla truck, 4x4 four four for 9,000, and they would fill up the gas tank, right? Before, and I got, so I'd never seen money like this before. And then we won this trip to the Cape Sun, Marco, the Cape Sun in Cape Town. And we arrived there. Now, come on, I'm a farmer. In Africa, you put your suitcase down, it's stolen. So we arrived at the Cape Sun. They got the red carpet rolled out. We, we arrived there barefoot, first of all. They didn't want barefoot feet people in the hotel. But our whole family, we were farmers, right? So we get there. We, we, they want to take the suitcases out of my car. I said, don't you touch those suitcases. I'll, I'll carry them inside. Where they want to park my car, show for, I said, no, leave my car. I, I was, I'll never see it again. Just leave it right there. I'll, you just tell me where to park. You're not touching anything that belongs to me. I know. I was gone, right? I'm from Africa. So anyway, so we get in this place. It's got this tall glass lift that goes up and down, escalator. Well, I don't know what they call them in this country. Anyway, there's elevator. There you are, right? So anyway, so guess what happens? We get in this thing. Our kids had never been to Disney World. This is Disney World to them, right? Up and down. Eventually, the management phone says, is there any way you can get your family out of this lift thing, right? <laughs> anyway, so barefoot family. So anyway, so the last day there, we're in this beautiful suite. Now, we didn't know that this vacation the company sent us on covered anything we want to eat. It was absolutely, we were number one performers in Africa. So in the last week there, I think one more day, Roger Day phones us and says, tell me, Louis, how's the hotel? I said, Magn he said, what's the room like? Magnificent. He said, how are they treating him? He said, how's the food? Quiet. He said, how's the food, Louis? I said, we're eating at the burger place across the road. It's so expensive. He said, Louis, it's all included. Everything. Man, I nearly got sick of eating crayfish and steak until I left there. Um. <laughs> so you need a uh, point number three, develop a clear plan of vision. You need to know exactly where you're going, because if you don't know where you're going, if you want to go from Battle Street, Bakersfield, to Success Street, San Francisco, you need to have a clear route. 
You need to have a good map. You need to know where you are. If, if you phone me in this hotel, don't, because I don't know how to go anywhere. I've spent my life lost. I've been here without a clear vision for two days. I have got no idea. You know, I stand outside there and I drool. Where's my room? Is that way, that way? Up? I have got no idea. Anyway, so... I've never seen a place like this that is designed specially for people like me never to leave my room. So anyway, so, <laughs> so you need a clear plan of action. You need to know where you're going from and where you're getting to. So if you had a phone, you say, hey, Louie, how did you get to such and such a place? I say, where are you, number one? If you want to succeed in life, you need to know where you have to grow. What you have to do, what you have to put in place, what you have to overcome. You have to become a better you. You have to conquer your fears. You have, to, you have to overcome that which is holding you back. And I could carry on for 20 minutes on that. But let me tell you what drives me in this opportunity. It drives me knowing that anybody can do this business. I never forget going to an event. And Judy Van Aert was multiple sclerosis, MS, paralyzed from the neck down. And I never forget the day that she was carried across the stage in front of about 9,000 people in a wheelchair. She had gone world team from her wheelchair, paralyzed from the neck down. Now that made me so proud. I never forget, we got a gentleman by the name of Guala in East London, South Africa. One day he comes next to me to a function. And he, he says, yeah, he's, 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 he's right up there. He's like Tony and Yvette. And he looks down on me and he says, hey, Mr. Smith, can I take a photo with you? And he's got a brand new suit on. You can see it was from a dollar store or something. Anyway, so he puts a suit on and I say, wow, you look so sharp. He says, this is the first new clothes I've ever owned. He said, up until today, I've lived out of trash cans. I'm a street child, and we scratch through trash cans. But because of near life, I've got a brand new set of clothes. That's what gets me pumped up about this business. I never forget going to Kenya one day to go and do a meeting over there, just before the company opened. Don't tell Marco. And anyway, so guess what happened? I, I, I arrived there, and Chris Carley says to me, step back and look. I said, What? He says, can you see what I see? I said, yeah, the room's full, about 200 people. He said, no, they've got no shoes here. He said, we'll come back in a year or two and they'll have bicycles and they'll have shoes and eventually motor cars. And today we've got a distributor in Nairobi who drives a Pajero. Now, to me, that makes me so excited that people can come out of from where they are and build themselves up in life. All right, so the next thing is become the business owner. You have to become a business owner. Do you know who a business owner is? Somebody who gets up before they feel like getting up. Somebody who decides that they're going to succeed in life. A business owner is the first to arrive and the last to leave. They don't stroll towards a goal. Let me tell you, I'd be broke in this business. I arrive late and miss half the sessions, and you're never going to make it that way. You're going to have to say, this is my future. This is my business. I don't want to live like this for the rest of my life. I'm sick and tired of living like this. A business owner picks up the papers. I was picking, I was walking down the hotel and I saw some paper. I picked it up. Somebody says, Wow, why are you picking that up? Because the business owner does that. This is our venue, this is our event. We want to be proud of this place. Are you proud of it? Do you tidy the rows when you walk out of them? Do you pick up all the stuff? Are you a business owner? Or is this somebody else's business and you're hoping they make you rich? Business owners are self starters. I'm trying to skip over a whole bunch of stuff. Let me give you an idea of a business owner. It's two men sitting down on the side of the railway truck, having lunch, eating a sandwich, just dirty coveralls, greasy hands, and guess who comes past? The CEO of the railway company. And this dirty chap jumps up and says, hey, Jam, how are you? And they have a chat. And he says, when he sits down, his friend says, do you know who that was? You're the man knocking the pins in the railway line, and he's the CEO? He said, yeah, yeah. When we joined over here, I helped him fill in his paperwork. What? Is he more educated? No, no, same education. The difference is, I came for a job, for a salary. He came to make a difference. The difference between where you are now and where you're going to be is, are you the business owner? Follow your leader. Back in Africa when I was in the military, 
They used to teach us if you go through a minefield, follow very carefully the person carrying the mine detector. Don't be creative. Where they put their foot down, put their foot down. Don't step out of line. Let me tell you, your team has got a system, has got an organization, has got systems in place to take you step by step to your success. Follow them very closely. Follow them very carefully. And if somebody comes to you and gives you some advice, if it's not in your upline, I'm telling you it's going to set you back a year or two or three. Don't touch it. No, no matter how good it looks. It's very important to understand, follow your leader system. Because a little bit of confusion in this business will put you off track for years. Decide what you're going to do and follow it step by step towards your success. Hey, it might be unpleasant. I remember we were farmers back in Africa, ranchers back in Africa. And when we were little kids, we never wore shoes. And we used to go and get the cows in, milk them in the morning. If you've ever done that, you know cows don't give milk easy. And you're walking through this warm poop and it's squeezing through your toes. And it's disgusting. Anybody ever done that? And if you haven't, you have, you've done it. Yeah, Phyllis. <laughs> exactly. And it's got that warm, oozy feeling. And the only thing that's going through your mind, this too will pass. <laughs> and that's what you have to understand. The tough times in this opportunity, those two will pass. You need to grow to become a better you. As a human being... You need to grow as a human. Learn to dress, learn to shave. My wife loves this business. She couldn't get me to cut my hair. As a matter of fact, we had a photograph in our living room at home. I'm still trying to find it because I'd love to put it on the screen for you to look at. And I had this, and Bob Plouffe comes in the house and he looks at it and he says, ha, is that you? <laughs> and the photograph fell off the wall and broke. And Laverne's hidden it away. I can't find I'll put it up here. I've got nothing. You should have seen where I came from, right? If he can do it, anybody can do it. You have to grow. To, are you the weak link in the chain? Let me tell you, we had a truck back in Africa. And this truck, uh, well, I had lots of trucks. And I had a cottage company. And it went down the side of the cuttings. Of course, you're always trying to save money. You've got your own companies. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So I take a few of my big rigs in there. We load them each with a few, about 10 or 12 tons each. And we hook the chains onto this truck. And we're pulling it up the side of the mountain. It had only gone down about 200 yards. It had another 800 yards to get to the bottom. Fortunately, we hooked in some trees. I hooked the chains front and back. And I get it up. And just as it gets to the top of the mountain, guess what happens? <laughs> the one chain snapped. And as the one chain snapped, the second, the truck swung around and the second chain snapped. And we watched, watched this massive truck, you know, this big 18-wheeler go plummeting head over it, right down to the bottom. And we said goodbye to it. Right? And I had only canceled the insurance a month earlier. I thought, you know what, come on, this thing's never had an accident. We've had it for all these years. I think at that time we'd had it for about seven years. Never had a sting on it. Cancel insurance, lost it in a month later. So all I'm saying over there is you never know the future. Uh, to build this business, I would really make some quality decisions. And don't be the weak link in your chain. John Maxwell says you need to grow. If you go through a problem, you need to grow. And so in closing over here, when you get what you want in your struggle for self and the world makes you king for a day, just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what the man has to say. For it isn't your father or mother or wife whose judgment upon you you must pass. The fellow whose verdict counts most in your life is the one staring back in the glass. He's the fellow to please, never mind the rest, for he's with you clear to the end. And you've passed your most difficult, dangerous test if the man in the glass is your friend. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you cheated the man in the glass. Thank you so much.